Let's delve into the fascinating world of the Hiller's Air Tug, an ambitious concept from the 1960s that aimed to catch rockets midair using an enormous helicopter. The Hiller's Air Tug was no ordinary helicopter. It was a behemoth with a rotor diameter exceeding 400 feet, around 120 meters. Imagine a rotor span larger than a football field. This massive aircraft had a unique purpose, to play catch with a moon rocket, specifically the Saturn V's first stage. The Air Tug wasn't technically a helicopter. It was a rotary wing system for booster recovery. However, it looked and operated like a helicopter, earning it the nickname Air Tug. Its rotor system featured jet engines on the tips, allowing the rotors to complete one rotation per second, an impressive feat for something so wide. The engine was situated vertically within the rotor stem, and the Air Tug had two curving sides to stabilize rockets during flight. With a weight of 450,000 pounds, around 200,000 kilograms, it could carry a payload of 550,000 pounds, about 250,000 kilograms, resulting in a total gross weight of 1 million pounds. When a rocket, specifically the S-1C booster, was launched, the air tug would take off from a nearby airbase. It would fly to the designated landing zone where the booster was expected to descend. Hovering at an altitude of 15,000 to 20,000 feet, 4,500 to 6,000 meters, the air tug would wait for the booster to separate from the upper stages. The booster would deploy a double tandem pair parachute, with the upper section featuring a hook. As the rocket descended, the air tug would meet it at around 10,000 feet 3, meters. The daring maneuver involved hooking the descending rocket mid-flight, effectively catching it like a giant tugboat catching a falling object. The physics behind this operation were complex. The air tug had to match the rocket's descent rate, position itself correctly, and engage the hook, all while dealing with aerodynamic forces and rotor dynamics. Unfortunately, the Hiller's air tug remained a constant. Concept. It was never built or tested in real life. However, the idea of reusing rockets and catching them midair has resurfaced more recently, with companies like Rocket Lab exploring similar concepts. The Stratolaunch Rock is a massive, uniquely designed dual fuselage carrier aircraft developed by Stratolaunch Systems Corporation to air launch rockets and other vehicles to high altitudes. It features the longest wingspan of any aircraft at 117 meters, surpassing even the famous Hughes H-4 Hercules Spruce Goose. The rock's design incorporates two fuselages slash cockpits mated to a single wing, powered by six Pratt & Whitney PW-4056 turbofan engines originally designed for the Boeing 747. It has an immense maximum takeoff weight of 590,000 kilograms and is designed to carry payloads of up to 250,000 kilograms between the two fuselages. The primary purpose of the Stratolaunch rock is to carry rocket-powered vehicles to around 10,700 meters and release them for air launch to orbit. This air launch capability allows rockets to avoid the dense lower atmosphere, saving substantial fuel compared to vertical ground launches. It was originally intended for launching orbital class rockets, but after a change of ownership, its mission shifted to air launching hypersonic research vehicles. The rock was developed over eight years at the Mojave Air and Spaceport at a cost exceeding $1 billion by Stratolaunch, a company founded by the late billionaire Paul G. Allen. Its first test flight occurred in April 2019, shortly after Allen's passing. The company is now owned by Cerberus Capital Management. In March 2024, Stratolaunch successfully conducted the first rocket-powered test flight of its Talon A1 hypersonic research vehicle launched from the ROC aircraft. The massive size allows the ROC to serve as a unique air launch platform for testing hypersonic flight and potentially future space planes or reusable spacecraft from its center wing pylon. The name ROC draws inspiration from the mythological giant bird of Middle Eastern folklore capable of carrying off elephants, reflecting the aircraft's formidable size and strength. It represents a pioneering achievement in aviation, pushing the boundaries of aircraft design and operational capabilities.
Let's explore the Colossal Mi-32, a remarkable Russian helicopter that once captured the imagination of aviation enthusiasts. Mi-32, a super-heavy transport helicopter in the 1970s, the Soviet Union faced a unique challenge. The fuel, energy, and raw material resources were shifting from the European USSR to the vast regions of Siberia, the extreme north, and the far east. These remote areas posed enormous distances, complex terrain, severe climates, and a lack of roads and air fields. Helicopters played a crucial role in ensuring a steady supply of industrial equipment and goods to these regions, regardless of the season. However, existing helicopters like the Mi-6 and Mi-10K couldn't always meet the demands of transporting heavy machinery and construction equipment, which sometimes weighed 35 to 40 tons. The armed forces also needed helicopters capable of transferring large combat technology, including tanks, rocket installations, and engineering equipment. In the mid-1970s, the Soviet government tasked MIL, the Design Bureau, and TSAGI, Central Institute of Aerohydrodynamics, with studying the feasibility of transporting heavy loads using multiple helicopters connected by a rigid frame. The idea was to create a super-heavy transport helicopter capable of carrying massive payloads. MIL explored various options, including using two or three Mi-26 helicopters with a common cable suspension. Additionally, they considered a two- or three-screw helicopter based on the Mi-26 system. The result? The ambitious project received the designation Mi-32. Rather than opting for a single rotor design, which would complicate the main rotor gearbox and carrier system, Mill drew inspiration from their experience with the V-12 helicopter. The V-12 had doubled carrier systems from a single rotor helicopter, allowing it to handle increased load capacity. Following this approach, the Mi-32 utilized carrier systems and power plants from the Mi-26, a proven heavy lift helicopter. The Mi-32 aimed to be a workhorse for transporting heavy machinery, combat vehicles, and other oversized cargo. The Mi-32 was designed to carry exceptionally heavy loads, far beyond what existing helicopters could manage. It could transport industrial equipment, combat technology, and even evacuate damaged vehicles. The development of this unprecedented machine was conducted with great enthusiasm, but technical challenges remained. Unfortunately, the Mi-32 remained a concept. It was never built or tested in real life. The Mi-32 represents an audacious vision, an attempt to conquer the skies with a helicopter capable of lifting immense loads. While it never took flight, its legacy lives on as a testament to human ingenuity. The Antonov An-225 Maria, which translates to dream in Ukrainian, was a legendary Soviet-slash-Ukrainian strategic airlift cargo aircraft and an icon of aviation. Designed and produced by the Antonov Design Bureau in the Soviet Union during the 1980s, it made its maiden flight on December 21, 1988. The An-225 was originally developed as an enlarged derivative of the An-124 to transport the Buran spacecraft orbiter for the Soviet space shuttle program. With a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons, a wingspan of 88.4 meters, wider than an Airbus A380-80 meters, and powered by six turbofan engines, the Colossal N-225 was the largest and heaviest aircraft ever built. It had a 32-wheel landing gear and could carry a maximum payload of 250 tons, setting the world record for air cargo transportation with 189.9 tons in a single flight. The unique aircraft garnered over 200 world records records during its 30-plus years of service. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the one-of-a-kind on 225 became part of Ukraine's Antonov Airlines fleet for commercial operations based at Hostomel Airport near Kiev. Despite plans for a second airframe, a lack of funding prevented its completion. The Maria did not fly for a year after the Soviet collapse, but returned to the skies in 2001 with a test flight. Tragically, the sole existing in 225 was destroyed in February 2022 during the Battle of Antonov Airport in the early stages of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Its destruction represented a major blow, as the aircraft's unmatched air freight abilities were lost forever. Nonetheless, the legendary Maria left an indelible legacy as a testament to Soviet engineering and aviation prowess.
The Sikorsky CH-54 Tarhi, also known as the Sky Crane, was a large, heavy-lift helicopter used by the United States Army and Air Force. Originally developed for the U.S. Army, it entered service in 1962 for transporting heavy equipment, vehicles, and outsized cargo for the military. The CH-54 featured a unique twin-engine design with two turboshaft engines providing power to the main rotors and payload hook. It had a single main rotor and a smaller tail rotor for directional control. With a maximum payload capacity of over 20,000 pounds, 9,000 kilograms, and a maximum gross weight of 88,000 pounds, the Tarhi was one of the most powerful heavy lift helicopters ever built for its size. It could carry loads of up to 20 tons, 40,000 pounds, providing unmatched heavy lift capability for its time. The helicopter featured a unique split torque transmission system and anhedral downsweeping main rotor blades. The Tarhi had a crew of three, pilot, co-pilot, and flight engineer. It saw extensive use during the Vietnam War, playing a vital role in logistics as it moved heavy equipment and artillery pieces to remote jungle locations for the U.S. Army. The CH-54 earned its nickname Tarhi from the Native American word for crane. Production of the CH-54 ended in 1978 after 105 helicopters were built, and it was eventually replaced by the CH-47 Chinook. However, civilian versions known as the S-64 Sky Crane continued to be employed for firefighting, construction work, logging operations, and other heavy lift tasks due to their exceptional lift capabilities and versatility.